This is part two of a three-part video series. I'd recommend watching part one first, linked in the description below, for the sake of context on why I'm making this series. The morning of July 20th, I, like many other Linkin Park fans, were excited to see the release for the new music video for the song Talking to Myself. I absolutely loved the video and continued on with my day. Until I saw Chester Bennington trending on Twitter. My immediate thought was this was just another celebrity death hoax to get people riled up. But then I had this awful feeling in my gut. And then the fan sites I follow started tweeting. And I lost it. I wanted to still be in denial. Then almost immediately I had people messaging me on Twitter and Facebook. People who I hadn't talked to in years because I had always prided myself in being the person my friends thought of when Linkin Park came on the radio. I was so desperately in denial, constantly refreshing Twitter over and over again. Please be fake. Please be fake. Please be fake. And then Mike. The messages wouldn't stop, and while I was grateful that so many people were trying to see if I was okay, most of them I just... I couldn't respond to. I ended up writing a post on social media that said all I could say to the people who cared. Chester's gone. Even writing it, I can't accept it. Everyone keeps messaging me saying I was the first person they thought of. I'm sorry for my lack of response, but this, right here, is all I can manage to say. Chester is the reason for so much of who I am and what I've become. Chester is the reason I met my girlfriend Alyssa seven years ago. Chester is the reason I gathered the courage to move halfway across the country to be with her. Chester is the reason I'm alive. I was able to tell him he saved my life the first time I met him. I was able to tell him what his music did for me in mourning for my father the night he did the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, the last. I only met him three times, but every time I did, my life was impacted. Linkin Park's music helped me become open-minded to so many different genres in the industry to the point where I no longer believe genre matters at all. Linkin Park's music taught me empathy. There is a reason I have his signature tattooed on my arm. I always want to be reminded of his kindness and how he humbled himself to me and every other member of our community, one of the only communities I ever truly felt accepted in. What do you do when the person who saved your life on countless occasions takes his own. It is so hard to write right now, but I had to. For a time when it was easier, I'll leave you with what I wrote three years ago on my blog, the last time I spoke directly to Chester. Chester Bennington saved my life. As I said in the post, in 2016, I had moved from New York to Illinois to be with my girlfriend, whom I had met through our connection with Linkin Park. <sighs> We'd seen multiple shows separately because we lived halfway across the country from each other. We'd talk about one day going to a concert together since 2010. We were so excited that we'd finally have the chance when Linkin Park announced the One More Light North American tour and bought our tickets to see them on August 14th, 2017. We were heartbroken. I had bought my girlfriend an LPU membership earlier that year in the hopes that we could both win a meet and greet that year. And I could tell them that they were the reason we met 
and I could experience my girlfriend's first time meeting Chester. And I could once again thank Chester for the ice bucket challenge and everything he's done for me since then. But that was never going to happen. A thought that sometimes crosses my mind is I don't know if I would have gotten through Chester's passing if I hadn't moved halfway across the country to be with my girlfriend. Which was because of Lincoln Park in the first place. I had experienced a lot of death since my father died, but none had hit me as hard as Chester's passing did since then. I know I wasn't the only one feeling this way though. The whole damn world was mourning. Tributes were being made all over the world. I'd never seen anything like it. So many people gathered and celebrated this man who lifted them up just as he did for me. Lincoln Park eventually released this message to the fans in Chester. Dear Chester, our hearts are broken. The shockwaves of grief and denial are still sweeping through our family as we come to grips with what has happened. You touched so many lives maybe even more than you realized. In the past few days, we've seen an outpouring of love and support, both public and private, from around the world. Talinda and the family appreciate it and want the world to know that you were the best husband, son, and father. The family will never be whole without you. Talking with you about the years ahead together, your excitement was infectious. Your absence leaves a void that can never be filled. A boisterous, funny, ambitious, creative, kind, generous voice in the room is missing. We're trying to remind ourselves that the demons who took you away from us were always part of the deal. After all, it was the way you sang about those demons that made everyone fall in love with you in the first place. You fearlessly put them on display, and in doing so, brought us together and taught us to be more human. You had the biggest heart and managed to wear it on your sleeve. Our love for making and performing music is inextinguishable. While we don't know what path our future may take, we know that each of our lives was made better by you. Thank you for that gift. We love you and we miss you so much. Until we see you again, Lincoln Park. Some time had passed. The world kept spinning. People eventually stopped talking about it. This post I found from Twitter user Elusive J felt especially relevant. We eventually started to hear more from Mike on social media or even Chester's wife Talinda, both helping to push the hashtags Make Chester Proud and Fuck Depression. On October 27th, Two days before the 11th anniversary of the day my father died, Lincoln Park performed at the Hollywood Bowl in Los Angeles and let the world watch live on YouTube. In a month that is usually incredibly difficult for me, that night was so needed. Mike, Dave, Joe, Rob, and Brad didn't need to do what they did, but they knew how much that night would help the fans, despite how difficult it would be for them to get through it. The day passed. Once again, the world went silent, but the fans, well, we're still here. We still remember. Mike Shinoda put out this incredible, almost diary-like album, Post Traumatic, helping not only himself through the mourning process, but his fans as well. I don't blame Chester. I never have. If you've lived with a mental illness every day of your life, something I'm going to discuss further in part three of this series. You might have an idea of how easy it could be to get to the same point Chester got to. To lose all control, let the illness take over you, and win this war you've been fighting for so long. That's what depression can do. Just because you can't see it happening to someone, and there's no direct cause, and they might look happy on the outside. It doesn't mean that this couldn't happen to someone you love. Something we should try to keep in mind, especially in the comments, is this quote from Mike's wife, Anna Shinoda. 
One thing we can all do to help stop the stigma around mental health, mental illness, and suicide is to look at our words. Words matter. When we say died by suicide instead of committed suicide, we focus on the illness rather than blaming the survivors or the deceased. The answer to why did somebody but I by suicide is always mental illness. That is the reason. And if we can start there, we can move forward not only to prevent more suicides, but to help more people find mental health. Chester once said, There is something about that one kid who got there early, got his tickets first, and ran up to the barricade and waited all day to scream as if they were in the band. I remember being in that place, looking up at my heroes. There is nothing better than being that for somebody. You were Chester. And I can't thank you enough for that. If you're having suicidal thoughts, please go to chester.linkinpark.com.